Do you love the look of a hand quilted quilt and really want to give it a go yourself but are not sure where to begin? Or perhaps you have tried a bit of hand quilting on a smaller project perhaps and would love to tackle something larger but that just feels overwhelming. Have you watched different videos about ways to hand quilt and looked at different designs and just felt a bit daunted about which direction to go in? But every time you see a hand quilted quilt it draws you back in and you really want to give it a go. Well that's how I've felt about hand quilting and I'm on a bit of a hand quilting journey myself but in this video I'm keeping it simple. The vast array of threads and needles and thimbles that we can use for hand quilting can just feel confusing and overwhelming so I'm going to really break it down and share my favourites with you today. Of course it's all personal preference but I've tried a lot of different things and I'm going to show you what works for me and also my really simple approach to hand quilting and I made this quilt a while back and I will leave a link to the video showing those steps in the description box below. But if you'd like to go on this simple hand quilting journey with me then please keep watching. So first let's talk about tools that we'll need. This is my little pouch of hand quilting items in which I keep my needles and threads. Now in terms of thread I'm doing big stitch quilting so not the tiny dense quilting stitches that you might see on some traditional quilts. Mine is big stitch quilting so I'm using a thicker thread. I'm using a 12 weight thread and I know some people like to use pearl cotton and things for big stitch quilting but this is my thread of choice. I love this weight, it's not too thick, it's not too fine and I'm using the fruity thread made by Wonderfill and it is a variegated cotton thread but the variegation in it is tonal so you don't get huge colour changes, you get subtle colour changes and I chose an array of colours that match my quilt because I don't want my quilting stitches to disappear, I want them to be visible, not stand out dramatically but I do want them to be visible so I chose my favourite selection of colours and they match the fabrics that are in my quilt and as I know lots of you always ask me where to buy the things that I show in my videos I will leave links in the description box to where you can buy them from. I do sell quite a few of these items myself on my website and I do ship internationally but you might be able to find them more affordably in your country. Now here's a little example of where I've used the pink thread to go around this flower and I'll show you the technique for doing this a little bit later on in the video but you can just see how it just adds a little subtle pop of colour around the flower and I really enjoy that. Next let's move on to needles and I absolutely love these needles which are made by Pony, that's the brand, and they're called Your Certain Stitch Needles and they come in four different types, short darners as I'm showing here, betweens, then we have the crewels and also the sharps and I'm actually using one of the sharp needles for my quilting but what you'll notice about these needles is they all have a little coloured stripe on the end and the different needles in the pack have different size stripes on them so actually having all of the different types is really useful because this stripe at the end can be used as a guide to help your stitches be of a uniform size. You can use the gap at the end between the point and the coloured band to size your stitches or you can use the coloured band to do that. And when we get onto the stitching part later in the video I'll show you how I'm using them. And I think these are brilliant for people who are new to hand quilting. You can use them in any decorative stitching. They are really great so I thoroughly recommend the certain stitch needles by Pony. Again I'll leave a link in the description box or you might be able to find them near where you live as well. Now a thimble is pretty much essential when you are hand quilting because you will find that you are pushing the needle through layers 
which can be quite tough with your finger and you will inevitably end up with a sore finger. <laughs> now, there are so many different types of thimbles, open thimbles, metal thimbles, leather thimbles, acrylic thimbles, silicone thimbles, honestly, there are so many different materials, types, sizes, thimbles is a huge topic that maybe I'll do in another video more in depth because I have tried so many thimbles and I found one that I do like but it does have some drawbacks to it so I haven't found the perfect thimble for me yet. I like to use this one called a nimble thimble and I've chosen this one because it's a thin leather so I find it easy to hold my needle still. Some of the metal thimbles can make that a bit difficult or the bigger plastic ones. It has a metal thing in the top protecting the tip of your finger inside but I chose this one and I've been using this one for a while because they make them small enough to fit my fingers. You need your finger to touch the top of the thimble and that means it fits you properly if you can get the tip of your finger to the end of the thimble comfortably. But I do find that they stretch out and wear out quite quickly so it's not the perfect solution for me just yet but what you should do if you're trying to find the perfect thimble for you is just think about where you push the needle do you push it with the tip of your finger because one like this with a metal tip but silicon around the edge might be good for that but if you push the needle with the side of your finger like I do then the silicon might not be the best choice for you you can also buy thimble pads and they're really useful. They, they are little leather circles that you can stick onto your finger exactly where you need it. But thimbles are personal choice and you'll need to do a bit of trial and error to find the one that is right for you. Now the other tool that you'll need is something to mark your quilt design with. There are so many different marking tools to choose from, but I just keep it simple with a hair marker, which is this tool here, and that is made by Clover. And essentially that is just a piece of plastic, but you use it with a ruler to create a crease in the fabric and then you can use that as a guideline. So it doesn't do anything permanent to your quilt. And I'll show you how I use that later on. And then my other tool of choice is the Soline Air Erasable Pen. This works really well, but it disappears very quickly. So you need to stitch the design pretty much straight away as soon as you use it but this is the pen I prefer. But please remember, if you're going to test out a pen like this, do it on some scrap fabric first to make sure that it works. You don't want to ruin your quilt top. Now, when you have all of your tools ready, you are also going to need to have a basted quilt. But if this is your first time doing hand quilting, then you might just want to make a practice quilt sandwich rather than start out on a quilt that you've spent hours making. So you'll need your quilt top or just a piece of fabric if you're doing a practice piece. Some wadding or batting and I've used Hobbs heirloom batting, that's my favourite type. It's not too thick, not too thin. And then you need your backing fabric as well. So I have all of my quilt basted. I used a spray based for layering it up and holding those layers together. I used to use pins but I really love spray based now. I did this a while ago and it's held together perfectly. There aren't any slippages at all. And once you're ready with your practice piece or with your quilt, it's time to start planning the quilting. So the main thing to consider when you begin to plan your quilting design is how densely quilted it needs to be in terms of the batting, the wadding. It will specify on the packet the minimum distance you need it to be quilted. So for the Hobbs heirloom, it says quilt as close as a quarter inch apart or as far apart as three and a half inches. So I need to make sure that my quilting doesn't go further apart than three and a half inches, which isn't going to be a problem with this design. Now I'm looking at the flowers and I want to quilt around each flower, like an echo quilting, and I will show you that shortly. But in the borders, I want some 
sort of wavy design. I don't want to do straight line quilting because I want to mirror the curved design in the flowers so I think that will look really nice. So I'm coming up with ideas for that and I need something in the central panel as well. Looking at books can be a great resource when you're planning your quilting design and I used this design here in this book as my inspiration for the central motif that I'm going to quilt on the panel. It can be really daunting to look at your big open spaces on your quilt and to think how am I going to fill them? So look at books, search Pinterest and Google images and I'm sure you'll find some inspiration there. To start with quilting the central panel, I measured it and I used the Hera marker to mark out the exact centre horizontally and vertically. Next I just made a really simple pattern, a circle that will fit nicely in the centre and a simple petal shape that will fit really nicely into each square, each quarter of the central panel. And I just made them out of paper, really simple, and I'm just going to use my air erasable pen to draw around them. Now it is hard to see on camera, but I did draw around the circle and one of the petals. Then I'm going to stitch to the design and add the rest because the pen does disappear quite quickly. After quilting the four petals, I then used the template again to create just a smaller tip of a petal in the gaps in between and I just went around like that. And I also quilted right down the middle of each petal, just so that there was enough quilting in the centre. And I'll show you the full design later on. To create my quilting design in the borders, I just measured the borders and then drew a line right down the middle of each one and then I just created a two inch circle template and cut it in half for a semicircle and then drew around it by placing the straight edge on the central line and then once I'd done that I just flipped it the other way and carried on where I left off and that is creating that wavy line right down the center of the border and I'm doing that on both of my wider borders. So now we're ready to stitch. It's really important to be comfortable and I like to spread the quilt out on a table in front of me. I find that this works best for me. I'm going to demonstrate here with this flower and I didn't mark anything out to go around the flowers but the technique's the same on the parts that I did mark out too. So now let's focus on the hand quilting stitching technique. The first thing to do is cut a length of thread, tie a knot in one end of it and then find the point at which you want your stitches to begin but insert your needle quite away away from that. So I'm inserting mine about three quarters of an inch away from my starting point and I'm bringing my needle up where I want my stitches to begin. Then you can see the thread hits the knot there and now I need to give it a good tug so that the knot becomes buried in between the layers. And because my tail is actually quite long that still sticks out but I can just pull the layers a bit and it becomes hidden inside. Now it's just worth pointing out that I start this on the top of the quilt, not on the underneath. So now you can see where I'm lining up the end of that coloured band with where my thread is coming out of the fabric. Then I'm pushing the needle in, but this time all the way through to the back because that's really important. We want the layers to be kept together. Then I'm going to bring the needle partly back out again in line with the end of that coloured mark on the needle and using my middle finger which has the thimble on I'm going to push the needle 
back up again to take the stitch and then I'm going to go back down again before I pull it all through to make another stitch. I tried to load up a few stitches on the needle before pulling it all the way through. So I just continue in this way echoing the shape of the hex petal flower with my hand quilting stitches and I just try to keep them equal distance apart and also an equal distance away from the edge of the petal. And occasionally I just check that the stitches are coming through on the back but because I have my other hand underneath, I can feel the needle and so I know that it is going all the way through. Remember, if you need to reposition your quilt so you're stitching in a comfortable direction, then definitely do that. Because I'm stitching around the flowers, that's something I have to do multiple times for each one. When you come to the end I bring my needle through to the back and then I tie off the thread with a knot and we're going to bury that knot in between the layers again, really similar to how we began. So here's where I'm up to, the quilting is almost finished, I just have a little bit of the borders left to do and you can see here that the central design does actually stand out when you step back and look at it even though I've used a very very pale coloured thread because I didn't want my thread to clash with this lovely panel and I wanted my thread to pop in other parts of the quilt so that's why I used colours in the other bits but I'm really pleased with how it's turning out and this is the back, you can see the design on the back too and it's really given me a bit of a desire to want to try more traditional tiny stitch um, hand quilting so hopefully one day I'll be able to give that a go too. But I hope this video has helped to break things down a little bit and to see that you don't need anything really fancy to have a go at hand quilting, just a few tools and if you're looking at your empty, vast quilt and wondering where to begin with putting a design on it, just keep it simple, echo the shapes in your quilt, maybe create some straight lines, stitching or some curves in a really simple way like I did. And once you get started with that, more ideas will flow. So I will show you the finished quilt next time because I will show you how I'm going to completely finish it by doing the binding. So I hope you can join me next time to watch that. Thank you so much for being here. A huge thank you to everyone who has been supporting my channel, who has been giving me a th super thanks and also thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon. Take care, see you soon, bye bye.